What happened in Vietnam has never been black and white. The war is painted in so many shades of gray and a lot of muddy water. Then there are the colors, the lush green jungles, the red bloodshed, and a chemical known as Agent Orange. It's the deadliest poison known to man. We first introduced you to James Cripps almost a decade ago when he spoke to us from Tennessee. He had become the very first person to prove to the government he was exposed to Agent Orange, not in Vietnam, but in the U.S. at Fort Gordon. At the time, I thought I was six, 7,000 miles away from Agent Orange. But this proves he wasn't. It's a map showing where the government tested agents blue, orange, and white in Augusta from January of 1967 through December 1969. Back then, part of Fort Gordon was known as Camp Crockett. It included a replica of a Vietnam village for training purposes. We recently uncovered this video of a training exercise that surfaced with some long lost News 12 archives. It's training for a bus ambush in Vietnam. James Cripps's ambush came many years later when he got sick because of his exposure to Agent Orange. Then he says he was ambushed again. My exposure has almost killed my daughter. I, you know, I was trying to figure out where I was going to bury my daughter. Years after he spoke to us alone via satellite, he's doing the same interview, this time with Mandy. I have a rare blood disorder called thrombotic thrombocytopenia purpura. Mandy McCormick says she had no idea until she was 23 years old. Within a week, I almost died. In TTP, blood clots form in small blood vessels throughout the body, blocking oxygen to your organs. So doctors had to take out Mandy's blood, get rid of her plasma, and replace it with donor plasma. A lot of donor plasma. I never realized it would take more than 600 people donating blood or plasma to save just me. There is no cure. And according to several doctors, not a lot of question when it comes to the cause. McCormick's condition is a direct result of her exposure to is a direct result of her exposure to Agent Orange. Miss McCormick's is condition is a direct result of her exposure to Agent Orange. Did you ever in a million years think your dad's exposure could affect you? We didn't know about it back then. Um, all the information was classified. Aside from this map, our I-team also uncovered documents outlining how a helicopter sprayed a number of chemicals, including Agent Orange, on 98 acres in Fort Gordon's southern tip. But James Cripps believes it goes beyond that. He remembers spraying it on the ground and by lakes. Here's a picture of soldiers bathing in a stream near Camp Crockett. Could they have been exposed? What about their kids and grandkids? I have two daughters, and I can't imagine either one of them going through that. Which is why she's doing the same interview her father did with us all those years ago. Like her dad, Mandy has applied for benefits through the VA. The VA has a form for everything, but they don't have a form for this. That's because her dad wasn't exposed in Vietnam. He was exposed in Augusta. She writes, this is the only form available for filing a claim for the child of a veteran exposed to Agent Orange. The form is dated December 20th, 2016. To date, she says she's had no response. Why do you think her claim has been ignored? For the same reason mine was, was so hard to win and other veterans have been ignored. But ever since that first interview with us years ago, his story has been helping other veterans. Just this year, we found a claim with the VA specifically referencing our News 12 investigate story in an appeal. It appeared his claim of Agent Orange exposure had been denied, so our story was part of his evidence. The judge remanded it, meaning it goes back to the VA for review. Had it not been for your TV station, WRDW, in Augusta, we would not have gotten this far. Mandy hopes to take this even further. And when something like this can affect up to three generations, then they absolutely have a responsibility to research it and find out, um, you know, what the effects are in the children and the grandchildren of those veterans that are exposed. She's doing it for her daughters. It is a, a daily prayer that I don't pass this on to either one of my girls. But she's also doing it for others, the ones who could also have a cloud lingering over their family, generations after they spent time in Vietnam villages, even if those villages were not in Vietnam. I mentioned one case with the VA, the one that mentioned our News 12 report as evidence. Well, here are the others, and these are just from this year. 
all of these have to do with Agent Orange's exposure at Fort Gordon. I have a lot more digging to do, plus some lawmakers to contact. I'll keep you posted. It is a place of reflection, where visitors are supposed to see their own reflection. The Vietnam Wall is almost like a mirror that connects the living to the more than 58,000 who never came home. Most were killed in action. Others were MIA, but presumed dead. But all of the names on the wall are connected to combat. As a command sergeant major, Richard Meade was painfully aware of each and every name from his unit. He was the one that had to write the letters home to the parents that, hey, you know, sorry for your loss. You know, your son has been killed in Vietnam. That's his son, Richard Meade Jr., born after his dad returned from Vietnam. He had survived the war, or so he and his family thought. Decades later, the government would admit his cancer was service-connected and 100% disabling. It was also associated with exposure to Agent Orange. Which brings us back to the granite wall in D.C. You won't find Sergeant Major Richard Meade's name here. If you were a victim of Agent Orange, your name isn't etched in black. There are so many other things they had to worry about over in Vietnam. I think the last thing on their mind would be, oh, is this chemical safe? Right, I mean, then again, I mean, you kind of want to trust your government. But this video shows just how negligent the government could have been when it came to safety. The Army took this video in 1969 of soldiers spraying Agent Orange along a riverbank in South Vietnam. Notice, none of them are wearing any protective equipment. Nothing, not even gloves. The government was also negligent with information. According to a congressional report, the VA got its first claims asserting conditions related to Agent Orange in 1977. Two years later, Congress finally enacted several laws to take a closer look at whether exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam was associated with possible long-term health effects and certain disabilities. But we've uncovered this document from Dow Chemical, the company behind Agent Orange. It is dated February 22nd, 1957, and specifically mentions chloracne, the most common skin sign of dioxin poisoning, or Agent Orange exposure. It references a letter even earlier than that, in 1955, describing the hazards due to the toxicity of 2,4,5-trichlorophenol, or what's used to make dioxin, which makes Agent Orange so lethal. Still, seven years later, in 1962, President John F. Kennedy gave approval for the U.S. to start spraying. He said it was normal for them to have a field sprayed with Agent Orange while they were, you know, there. Agent Orange was supposedly helping Command Sergeant Major Meade and his men defeat the enemy. Instead, the toxin would serve as ammunition his own body would use against him decades later. That attack came April 11, 1996. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma linked to Agent Orange. We moved in to help, and then I get sick. He thought it was just breathing problems, but it turned out to be something far more serious. And they said stage four. Yes, Hodgkin's oh, lymphoma. He was only 38 years old. Richard Meade Sr. and Richard Meade Jr. So we were both undergoing chemotherapy at the same time. We're now fighting a war side by side. Richard also helped his dad battle the VA. He was turned down, I don't know how many times, and he had to resubmit it, then they review it, then turn down, resubmit it. Well, then we're only going to give you X amount of percentage. Then he had resubmitted again, now we're going to give you this amount of percentage. It's kind of like, hopefully they were waiting for him to die where they didn't have to pay anything. Unlike so many Vietnam veterans, Meade outlived his claim. He died in Augusta November 29, 2010, with full benefits. So, are you going to apply now? Yeah. Yeah, now that I've, I've talked to you and I, I see that there is an avenue for me to explore. Right now, the VA recognizes certain birth defects of children of vets exposed to Agent Orange as collateral damage. It took decades for spina bifida to be added. It also took decades for the VA to admit these are connected to the veterans who were exposed. And then there are the Blue Water Navy veterans who were stationed on ships offshore during the Vietnam War. A decision came down just this year they could be included. After years of fighting, their claims will finally be considered in 2020. A lot of them won't live that long. I never went into war. You know, I don't deserve any praise. You know, I, I haven't, you know, seen my best friend die in, in combat, so I didn't really feel like I, I was, I deserved it. 
But after our report, where three different doctors said they believe Mandy McCormick's rare blood disorder is because of her dad's Agent Orange exposure, he reached out to some who have seen combat. I've talked to a couple of veterans, and they're like, well, you know, you are you were almost a, a veteran like us because, you know, you were exposed to Agent Orange. So I wouldn't be offended if, if you did apply for him. So he will apply for benefits and hope for the best, even though he expects to hit a wall at the VA, much like the names of Agent Orange casualties that are stonewalled from ending up on this stone wall. Something else to note here, Richard Meade Sr. also had a daughter after returning home from Vietnam. She doesn't appear to have any health problems, but her daughter was born, born with spina bifida. You'll remember that's one of the VA's recognized birth defects for children of vets exposed to Agent Orange. This could be further proof the toxin can be passed to three generations. She is now in the process of applying for benefits, too. And that documentation that we just showed is so important, Meredith, in helping these people get their claims and prove their cases of Agent Orange Absolutely. exposure. Absolutely, and who knows how many people this could be affecting. Hopefully we'll hear from more of them as this goes on.